Maria Goretz, she is a thanks for the gift of life and all the provisions he has given her. She prays for their family, prays for all the sick and prisoners, prays for her sons, Michael, Makuria, Pauti, to pass their yearly exams this year. Kind praise to our pure and charitable mind, the perfect designation, the divine will, and she prays through the intercession of Saint Joseph. Then he stands God through Mother Mary and prays for more words will be done in his life. Joseph Bagimuka thanks God for the gift of life and prays for the soul of Nakayima and it rest in peace. <coughs> see. Thanks God for everything he has done in his life and family and praise for a big healing of a mom, Maria, who is sickly. Joseph Barimuka and all Ernest G family pray for the soul of Mbaba's Penina to rest in peace. Our real praise for the soul of Penina the souls in purgatory to rest in eternal peace. Grace Kalumba prays for all children, especially those glorious for her children, especially those without jobs. Praise for the souls of her parents, Sergio and Elena, and praise for her husband, late husband, Light Kalumba. Lord the souls in purgatory. Pray for pray for all marriages which are going through challenges, especially those on the verge of divorce through the intercession of our blessed mother. Yahoo, my immaculate. Thanks God for everything. Surrender us alive to God. And her family that they may overcome all the challenges they face. Our ring prays and thanks God for the gift of life, married children, life reward. She prays that God stays in charge of her life and family. She also prays for the souls in the purgatory to be delivered into heaven. Bowers it is. Praise for our boss, David, with money they will pay for their salary areas, and also praise for the company with which she works to continue growing. Together with this, our brothers and sisters, we also have our other personal intentions, we raise them up to God in this mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, those who are with us tonight, welcome you to this sacrifice of the mass. I think we are very, very blessed. Imagine three days, this is that day of the Lord. Three days, but every day you still put a new holy crown.
heritage center of the Liberal Party House of St. Joseph, and now this other ground, the Resurrection Gardens. We must pay thanks to a very, very big thank you. And 
the Lord is asking us the same way we ask Elijah. We do we swear to God by the hear in the silence of this place, God is asking us, what are you looking for? What are you doing here? May we collect, recollect our minds, may we turn away everything that is making noise, that is making a lot of noise in our minds and we listen to the Lord who is speaking to us who is asking us what are you doing here and you know Elijah tells God I am here because people are running after me they want to kill me they have destroyed your order they have messed up everything and so they want to kill me as well and then God Elijah what to do next. To go and anoint a new king, to go and anoint his successor. Whatever has brought you and me to this place, let us open it to God and ask him to take control of our lives, to take control of whatever is making a lot of noise in our hearts, in our families, in our minds. Father was telling us silence that, that when we pray we quickly fall asleep or sleep quickly comes because there is a way prayer silences every noise that is in our minds and so when we get that little piece of prayer of encountering God we are free and we know we easily fall asleep because we are on some peace and there is also a time when you are in your room and the entire night you cannot sleep. Why? Because you have not prayed, you are not, not engaging with God, and secondly, because there is a lot of noise. Even when you have switched off power, when there is no one out moving, no music banging, but still you cannot sleep. Because of the thoughts, because of the stress, because of the mind that is not so. Whatever has called us a lot of noise, stress, depression, let us raise it to God in this place and in a special way at this Mass. Think of that noise, think of that problem, think of that challenge, think of that persecution, think of that problem that forced you, that inspired you, that you missed for which decided to come to this pilgrimage and offer it to God. Make the habit, a bad one, that you have failed to stop. Maybe misunderstandings in your family, in your clan, it may be Disappointments in your relationships, it may be a lack of cash in your business or in your work, whatever work you do, it may be hatred of those you live with or work with, it may be Anything you offer to God. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have already sinned in my thoughts and in my words. Give us our 
sins and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. They laid her in an upper room. This leader was near Joppa. The disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, entreating him, Please come.
come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he had come, they took him up to, and when he had come, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him weeping, and showing pots and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. Then turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her. Then calling the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Responsorious Psalm. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. How can I the Lord for all his goodness to me? Your servant, Lord, your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bones. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. and no longer 
now what we need Jesus said to the people, Will you also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is good? All the time. What is good? All the time. All the time. The Lord is good and that's the same time. We used to have uh, one of our teachers in the seminary, a priest lecturer, and after saying God is good, he would add, people are good. <laughs> What is good? All the time. People are good? Not all the time. If it is not all the time, so what is it? Sometimes. Okay, people are good? Sometimes. Sometimes. People are good. And that is their nature. <laughs> so, anyways, if you I want to welcome you once again, dear brothers and sisters, to this sacrifice of mass. But, like I said at the beginning, we are blessed to be here. And once again, let us give a big clap. <laughs> blessed, we are favored, and I think we are loved in a very special way to be in this place at this time. I have been following uh, if that, that kid is good, Nikita. Nikita. I've been following Nikita and her mom, I think since yesterday. And I have, I have been meditating upon their relationship and my and for our relationship with God. And I kept imagining if this is how God looks at us, or if this is how Mother Mary looks at us as her children, I felt we are blessed. We are very much loved. So then, <laughs> as any of you have been following those people, those two people? <laughs> or, uh, anyway, they have put some notes in my, in, my, in my mind. You know, the kid keeps moving around makes unnecessary noise, goes and taps on someone as if someone has sent her and she has nothing to, 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 to deliver. And uh, I would keep looking at her mom. There is a, she's paying attention, but there is a way she turns her head. Even when she's looking, she knows where the kid has reached. <laughs> if she takes this side, suddenly you will see her turning this side. She knows somehow that now she has <laughs> And I felt maybe that is how our blessed mother loves us. And that even when she, the kid, I mean she, she's also a kid, the, the, the girl, when, when she is even risking to maybe climbing up on such a stool and she's about to fall, she is not worried and neither is the mother worried. Because she knows, they both know each other, that somehow they will save each other. <laughs> and at the table when the kid was eating, he was using a knife. And then she's like about to pierce the mouth or the cut the hand. But the mother is not bothered because I think they both trust each other. <laughs> and I felt maybe that is the bond we have with God, but we actually don't know. But I imagine and I want to tell all of you that that is how, or even more, God loves us. In the world. <laughs> and even when, like that kid, we are straying, we are falling into sin, 
we are about to fall, still God loves us in a very special way. And He knows and is willing to work on us as long as we come back. You know, there is a time she moves around, plays, jokes. There is a time when we are moving around. She even takes a different direction. But somehow, she gets lost. And I think her mind must not be having a lot of noise. She quickly uh, recollects and knows her loss. She comes back. And that is the power of silence. Actually, at a certain point, I told her mother, because there is where she sat and felt comfortable and she did not want to leave. I think it is the place of the mystery of suffering. There she did not want to leave. And I told the mother, you don't want to kill her for this year. <laughs> you are forcing her away. But I think the kid or other children quickly cry for their mother. You know, crying means I am lost. Or no one is concerned about me. So that, that is what I imagine crying means. So in the, in the mind of the kid, the, 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 the thought that appears most is the thought of hope. The thought of the mother. So wherever she gets lost, whenever she gets lost, the mind, because has no other worries, quickly thinks of the one who is in charge of it. When you get lost, what do you think about? Huh? You think about your mothers? You think about your husband? You think about your wife? Who do you think about when you get lost, when you run into problems, when you, for example, knock, uh, you are driving in the jam, when you get a problem, or when you get lost, when you get a challenge, who do you think of us? Let this kid teach us to think of God first. Even before going to the hospital, I'm not saying you don't go to the hospital, but as you make steps, you plan, pack up to go to the hospital for a sickness, pray that God will begin working right from there as you go to the hospital. There are people who come to God at the last moment. So what do they do? When they get sickness, they first inquire from the neighbors, then the neighbors tell them, go to Naro Mogu or Saro Mogu. I usually am use now because most of the is which come to me. I'm sorry if you are now, we are talking. So you know you first yes, you go to the hospital, others go to the witchcraft, to the shrines, those shrines. And when everything has failed, is when they come to the to the prayer group, is when they come to church, is when they decide to go to the Marokore, is when they to come back. Make sure, like the kid, every kid who thinks of her mother, every time she gets a problem, every time she's lost, you too must think of God first. Whenever you're lost. And, that, and you will only do that if you take time, sit down, and be silent, and reflect, and meditate upon where you are. Because you, the kid will not begin crying when she's still comfortable. <laughs> when she's still, uh, some people are still holding her arm. But again, even if you hold her arm, once she realizes, or somehow I think the wires, I don't know the connection she has with the mom, once she realizes the mother is maybe 10 meters away from her, she will say, I'm actually lost. She will, she will, she will want to play, yes, she will joke with all of you, but somehow she will keep looking, is the mom my mom is here around. And that should be our attitude as well. With God, you must never part ways with God. But if anything happens, you must learn to plan to sit down and reflect every day on your life. Do you know how many have seen? They've seen the uh, his, his prayer is seen. Catholic prayers we say every day in the morning and before we sleep. Now in the evening, well, you know, 
when I listen to Radio Maria, or when I pray those prayers, there is a prayer we begin, we begin with, and it says, how can I say that in English? Uh, you know, it, it, is, it, is, it is a statement that invites us, invites the one praying into meditation, into self-examination, examination of conscience, as Father said. Give me the grace to know the sins I have committed today and and they instill the grace to repent. So once you, after finishing that statement of prayer, now you sit back upright, first of all. Again, you know what I spoke about, about posture. The posture at prayer is very, very important. You cannot, you cannot pray when you are seated in church anyhow. That is why at some moments in, in, in mass, at mass, we kneel, we sit, we stand, we open our hands or close them. You know, those, those postures are very important because we cannot say, I, for example, can, can Father say, the Lord bless you, in the name of the Father, the Son, can, can it make meaning when I'm like this? I have seen uh, some great Anglican um, priests and now I've also started using it. They, they make the sign of the cross. So, the posture. So you sit and you think about the entire day. And that requires silence. You cannot reflect about the day when you are still asking for children, please pick the plates, first one wash, when you are still making noise, you cannot reflect about the day. And that silence, that reflection, that meditation, is what helps us to repent, to understand each other, to forgive each other. If you don't take time to, re to reflect on yourself, on your conduct, on your day, there is no way you will ever understand your shortcomings. You will only keep looking at the shortcomings of your children, of the husband, you have not done this, you left that, but once you sit down and think about your own self. When I woke up, I called my kid. I sent her for, 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 for a car. When she delayed, there is a word I use. How was that word? I think I used the bad word. When my husband asked me for his shoes, there is a way I responded. I said, you can please pick them up yourself. Did I speak well? Or with anger? Or I need to repent. So that is what silence, that is what meditation, that is what solitude does when we practice it. And it will help you. You know, you cannot sit down reflecting about your day, noticing you have committed over 10 sins, and then from there, Begin a choosing every other person after that prayer. You know, you will know I am a sinner. I even I am the worst sinner. I am the source of misunderstandings in my family. I am the source of quarrels in my family. I am the source of sadness I see with my children because I am arrogant, because I am proud, because I think everyone is bad and I am the only. only holy person in the family. So, that is about silence. We are still emphasizing it. And you cannot repent once you have not sat down and reflected. This is what we read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. The parable of the, of the prodigal son. The, when this child asked asked for his share, got it, sold it, went away, squandered all the money. What brings the kid back? What brings this son back? You know what brings him back? It is not poverty or lack of food. No. Because don't you know many people who are still who are in Kampara, 
here we have not gone to town, we are in I imagine they are also there. But don't you know many people who are in Kampara? Oh, your relative is why in Kampara suffering. But they are still there, we have persisted in their suffering. <laughs> so what brought this son back is sitting down and coming to his senses. That is what the gospel says. Says that he, when when this son came back to his senses, he said, "I will arise and return to who? You cannot return to the father. You cannot arise. You cannot repent unless you have come to your senses. And what helps us to come to our senses? It is the power of silence. It is the power of reflection. It is." Meditation, it is self examination. It is what changed the entire life of this boy. I will arise and return to who? To my, father. my father. You people take time to sit and think about your entire lives. Reflect, evaluate your life. Evaluate your. your your speech. You know, there are times when when someone comes for confession and they outpower the entire heart. And at heart, I feel that this person has gone a changed person, a new person. Because of the way they have, you know, someone's confessing even the, 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 the hardest, but you know, a list of a thousand sins, and she or he makes sure there is nothing left in her heart. And I really feel God is great. God has touched this person. But there are other times when someone comes, yes, it is confession, and I leave it to the mercy of God. Because a person comes and says, Father, you see, me, I would have no problem. <laughs> but uh, you see, when, when, when my husband married another wife, you see, we have been, uh, sometimes we exchange words, but I, I, she's the one who brings problems. <laughs> and uh, I keep listening, but I notice this person. It's like the other Pharisee, Pharisee who together with the tax collector went to, to, to the temple to pray. And the guy said, you see, I am not like the other man. I pay my time. My Sabbath is always there. So, God, you can also say I am not a bad man. <laughs> and the other one said, he, they actually said, he knelt down and bowed his head because he was very remorseful and very repentant. And we are told he went away with blessings, he went away and changed his uh, better than the other Pharisee. So, we are also uh, encouraging us to do a genuine repentance, a genuine confession of our sins. And that is when we have done serious self-examination, when we have grabbed the opportunity of the silence in these places we have visited. You cannot do a genuine confession once you haven't sat down and examined yourself and decided to quit sin. It will help you to repent. It will also help you to forgive. Because, once again, once you have not reflected out your own weaknesses, once you have not de de detected the, 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 we say, the, the log in your eye, you keep looking at the specks in the eyes of who? Of those around you. Your family members, your husband is the, the worst, or your, your, your wife is the worst, the children are not good, the mother in law, your mother in law, daughter in law, everyone around you, they are sinners, they are not good people. Kumbe, there is a very big log in your eye which stops you from seeing the goodness and understanding the weaknesses of those around you. So dear brothers, once we live, let us go and practice meditation, silence, 
and reflection. Every day, every day, before you sleep, think about how the day has gone. Help me to know my sins and give me the grace to repent. You cannot know and understand your sins and then in the morning you are pointing at people. No. And it will help you to live This is one of the one of the, the, the reasons or one of the teachings for which many people are leaving the Catholic Church. So now I come to the gospel. In the gospel today, having expounded and explained himself as the bread of heaven, the bread of life, Jesus' audience felt that this is a very hard teaching. No one can accept it. No one can take it. No one can believe it. The bread of heaven. You know, there are many many Christians, especially non-Catholics, many people that left the church because they would not accept, they would not conceive the reality and the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, in the Holy Eucharist. But there are also other reasons why, you know, that you know you people, you know people, why, why people are eating the Catholic Church? What do you think is the reason? Many people are leaving the Catholic Church, let me simplify it for you and the interest of time, because they want the easier way. They want to tell your neighbor the easier way. <laughs> what is the easier way? The easier way is I want to do everything I want. I don't want those to be bound by laws. I don't want you to tell me this. I don't want you to say do this. So people are looking for the easier way. Which the Catholic Church, and I think not the Catholic Church, which Christ himself dictates. Christ does not dictate an easier easy way on us. I think, you know, he says, uh, such, is it such? For the, for, the, for the narrow, for the narrow gate, or take, or follow the narrow gate, because that is the one that leads us to heaven. But many people have chosen why the gate, where everyone enters, when they want, when they want to leave, they go, where everyone commits sin and no one is caring, where everyone steals and no one cares, where everyone does whatever they want and no one is going to question. That is why many people are living in the Catholic Church. And so, when Jesus noticed that these people were finding it hard to believe his teaching, Jesus, the bread of life, Jesus, the holy Eucharist. People even fled, the audience left, and so he turned to the twelve and asked them this hard question. Will you also go away? Ask your neighbor, you people, I, 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 I don't know if we have none of here, but ask them. Ask him or her, will you also go away? And those online, will you also go away? <laughs> oh, and if you're already gone, why did you go? Why? Why? Because you wanted or you want an easier way. What are the easier ways? The easier ways are, for example, people don't want to hear that you can go to a priest and confess your sins. They, because, and you know that is the working of the devil. It is the devil, what well, actually even as Catholics here, you know why many people don't fear or not want to go for confession? It is the working of the devil. The devil tells them, oh, I'm here, I can speak to God, good, you know, you know me. I, I, I have repented. 
but it requires that you go to a priest, that you kneel down, having meditated and thought about your sins, and you do a genuine confession of your sins. And the priest, who has been given power to forgive sins in the name of Jesus, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, will bless you and will forgive you, and you will be set free. But many people, I think, under the working of the devil, are they say, ah, but I regret it. I regret it. I am I'm gone again. Well, where am I going? If you have repented. But don't fall perfect. You must. You must embarrass the devil. You know, when you go for confession, you embarrass the devil because the devil has been telling you, How can you tell that young man that you have committed this? It is the devil telling you that. How can I tell that? Father who sees me every day, what do you Others will say, But you see, I even forgot the prayers. Now, if Father sees that I even don't know how far I am going. So those are some of the reasons, but I think that is the working of the devil. You must go and confess and embarrass the devil. There is no priest who is interested by God. There is no priest interested in your sins. He is also struggling with his. <laughs> and you know, the other thing the devil tells us, the devil tells us, I think it will be you in the eye in the in the ears of Father Father Lakanas. <laughs> no, Father Lakanas and and I we are we are we are classmates. So we were dating in the same year. So in, in August uh, we shall be making two years. But I want to assure you that even in those even in those two years, in, as as little as they are. There is no sin we have in heart. So you cannot introduce a new sin. <laughs> so go and embarrass the devil. Do not allow the devil to tell you this sin is new. I cannot say. You must go and confess it. And you will have peace. You know the peace we get when we go for confession. Especially when you go for a genuine one. When you do a genuine one. Not this way you tell some sins and you leave the others. That one is, it is lacking. When you do a genuine confession, I know I use this, this example. Have you ever been gossiping about someone? Have you ever? And that very person lands on you guys. But when he lands on you or lands you uh, gossiping and you actually saying something, false or uh, false accusation, she did not take it in a serious, she ignored you, and uh, she, she actually meets you, she greets you, but deep in your heart you're burning the one with the guilt. So you will never have peace until you confess to her, uh, or until you say, by the way, I am sorry. That is the same with God, I imagine. That you know, you know, God knows us in and out. And every time we come for mass, we go for prayers. You know, we go for pilgrimages, and God is looking at us. <laughs> he sees how terrible we are, and how unwilling we are to confess our sins. But as the moment you confess your sins, the moment you say to your neighbor, "I am sorry for this," you know. Most of us are peaceless, have no peace in our minds because of the sins we have committed. Because of the anger we have failed to release by forgiveness. Please. That is one of the reasons why people are living in time. Because they want the easier way. No one should listen to me. No one, no one should say, I am the head of, you, of the church. Unfortunately, they, re they reject the proper leaders of the church and follow the, 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 the
Bayai means that. The other thing that people are running away from is they don't want commitment and responsibility. For example, you know why many people are refusing to, to, to do to win? They want is a cow, is a bull. I married today, tomorrow I send you away, the other day I but this is what Jesus is asking us. This is one of Jesus' hardest teachings. One man, one woman. And the marriage must be blessed before the church, in church. But you know someone is planning to marry another one next year. So I am preaching to him, please come for a wedding. They don't understand you. For that matter, they choose to go where life is easy. But I want to tell you and remind you that Jesus has never promised us an easy life. If anything, he said, if anyone wants to follow me, he shall deny himself, take up his cross, and do what? Following Christ is not a, is not, is not, is not a picnic like the other side of the stuff. <laughs> Sometimes it requires carrying the cross. And I thank you people that in that, in, in, in your following Christ, you have engaged Mother Mary. Because Mother Mary, you know, we also refer to her as the redemptive or the redeemer, because of the role she played in our redemption. The sorrows she endured, or she shared with Christ. Our Mother Mary, Mother Mary must inspire us, must be our role model in enduring suffering and uh, the trials. It is good we actually even so one of the things that I have put my attention is the mystery of suffering there, and I felt I should tell you about it. That following Christ involves pain. He actually tells, tells his, his disciples. When he sends them out, I am sending you like sheep into what? Into wolves. He also at some other point tells them, you will be hated, you will be persecuted, you will be drawn into you will be drawn into courts. For who? For my sake. Therefore, the desire to run away from Christ because of his his hard teachings. Is because maybe we have not understood who Christ is. We want Jesus alone without Christ. You know, it is Jesus Christ. So many people who are running away from the church, they, they only want the, the Jesus, but the Christ aspect, the cross aspect, the suffering aspect, no one wants it. But I think if you do that, you are not following the real. The real Savior I know about. Therefore, Jesus is asking you and me, will you also go away? Because the church is asking you to commit to one wife, to commit to one husband, to commit to a woman, not a fellow man or not a fellow woman. Will you run away because of Jesus' teaching that we hear today? I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never do what? And I will raise him up. Things that, that, that I liked was the 
the last moment, as we came in the bus, the testimony of the other protestant guy. You know what is her name? So while we were on the bus, Tomar uh, requested for testimonies, and uh, people gave testimonies, testimonies, and somewhere I asked him, but you say we have non Catholic some minister. And through the entire pilgrimage, I, I did hear you people introducing them. So I asked him, can you please introduce them? He did. Can you please give one of them a chance to also give a testimony? Because me, I was there to listen. I had given my part, of course, but it wasn't so big. Mine was so small. So I love the testimony of this guy, the Protestant guy, who her friends had been calling on her, please come, we go to recite the rosary. And she would, of course, you know, as, as an Anglican, crush it away. And I think at some point, Mother Mary touches her and she accepts to go for the first pilgrimage. And when she went, I think she came back a new person. And so she told us, you people do not joke with Mother Mary. <laughs> that was her this point. But while I thought she had finished, and maybe she had, uh, that was her testimony, she added this one that caught my attention. And so she said one time she had issues, and she was praying, she wanted God, for, she really wanted God to tell her what exactly is the problem, or what should she do. So she, you know, she even told us, she, she, she put up her, her altar in, in her, put up an altar in her room, where she put the portrait of our lady and maybe the candle and the rosaries. And so she said she, that night she knelt and decided to pray endlessly until God should say something. So she knelt and prayed and prayed and prayed, but God was not saying anything. And somehow she fell asleep. Like we already said, you know, once you are with God, once you are in prayer, and I think it is better that you sleep, you fall asleep holding your rosary than go to bed like a monkey or like a lamb. <laughs> it is good, like, like you wake, you know, it has happened to me. I wake up uh, maybe at one or three and I find the rosary in my hand. I can say this is great. <laughs> it is better than sleeping like a cow. A human being, you go to bed without a prayer. So, the girl prayed and prayed, and she told us she could not, I think, sleep took her, and she slept. But she said that night, she dreamed this. That while she was sleeping, of course she slept in prayer, I think, God told her, you must begin going for Mass. And she told us, from there, from that day, you know she had not been going for Mass, she slept. Told us she's a younger She had not been going for mass, but she told she tells us from that day she started going for mass. And she added, she started, she also started going for adoration. She told, she told us every Thursday the people around her workplace know she will live at this time and she's not going anywhere else, but she's going for adoration. Jesus present. <laughs> But this is the mystery, this is the treasure that many people are running away from. This is the treasure that the audience of Jesus failed to understand and decided to run away. You people, I want you to know that the Mass, the Holy Eucharist, is the only treasure that differentiates us from other Christians. Take away Mass, take away the Eucharist, we are like any other Pentecostal or, or, or any other. This is what keeps us Catholic, the Eucharist. This is what keeps us special. This is what other Christians admire or lack in their life as Christians. Why did you go? Oh, why are you going? You know, Peter responds and says, you know, Jesus asks them. So, you see how these people going, 
and I think I should ask you the same. You see people are running away, you see your relatives, you see your husband, your wife, or your children are all living to the Pentecostals. So Jesus asked them, Hold, will you also go away? Interestingly, Peter, this, this famous spokesperson of the, of the apostles, says, Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of what? Eternal life. Where shall you go without Christ, without the Eucharist? You know, I don't know if this song is in, is in, in Uganda, but it, is, it should be there. There is a song we say, we sing. What is the translation of Uganda? Should be there. Be. Yes, uh -huh. Taking part actively in 
one single mass is better than all that. Do you people have mass? Do you people know what you what what you partake of when you attend mass? Especially actively, you know, you know it's also different. There are people who go to mass, they sit, keep looking at the conductor of the choir and the father blesses and they are good to go. You might always you might be a person that goes away empty-handed. You must prepare yourself for mass, and while at mass, you must follow everything. Because you know here the three father is leading, yes, but somebody says. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice, and whose? And yours. Might be acceptable to whom? God. God. Therefore, when you come from Mass, don't sit and relax as if you are in a video board. No! Don't say those who want to start up, start up. You must. You might, you might, you might uh, give him the photo man in the, the bus when he's preaching. But at mass, you must pay attention and you must pray for him. Pray for him. You must see. There are people who come, they sit, and they are watching a concert by the choir. You will go away empty and You must see. At least if you don't know the part, at you, 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 you must be knowing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, because as Father told us, at Mass, the earth is united with heaven to sing the glory of God, to sing Hosanna with the angels. Holy, 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 we sing with the angels. Hosanna in what? Yes. You people think about those things, or you just wave and wave and go away. <laughs> you must begin thinking about every part of this, of Mass, of the Eucharist, which Jesus offers us, which people have failed to understand. And maybe some of us also don't understand. You say, can we name that God? <laughs> my brother, my sister, you must take interest in these things. The temple of the one, the temple of the Eucharist, Father told us in the morning, that in every, is it in the morning or yesterday? In every other place, every, even the biggest uh, uh, churches in town, you will find what? This is for an uncle or the lectern. You will find it there, the temple of the world. They have and the big ones and nice ones, glass, wood, whatever. Even marble they are there. But this temple, this is a very special temple. This is a And so from here, having partaken of the word of God, we now, as part of this table of the Eucharist, where we partake of Christ himself. It is a moment you should not look aside. It's a time back in our parish when I almost quarreled and uh, sent out some, because as we have spoken, you know, Father also spoke about, as we are, I was consecrating, which I imagine these people are serious Catholics and they understand. Somebody moved out, rose, and began moving out. First of all, it is bad for yourself, it is also bad for people you have decided to distract from a very great mystery and a very precious moment in their life. The time of consecration is a time you must focus. It is a healing time. You know this. The time when we speak of healing masses. No, every mass is a healing mass. If you might be distracted, maybe as far as preaching, you might doze because it's boring. But here, here, it is here, you must not doze. You must not look aside. You must not joke around. It is a healing point. You know, there is a priest who told us he had been suffering he had a, with problem with eyes. But he hear it from, from Mass at the moment of consecration. When you bring your offering, your prayers, you know when Father says, let us pray, he pauses a bit, and then you are supposed to insert your prayer there. You know that you are supposed to do? 
Oh, you just say, Father, Allah, you know what I'm saying. Father, you know what I'm saying. It is provided that when Father says, let us pray, you, he keeps quiet. He's, he, it is written here, he's supposed to pause and let you people add something. Add your private prayers. So even when you bring your offering here, it is not you must offer it from your heart, your prayers, and you must unite it with these, these main species we offer to God, the bread and the wine, which God transforms into a new life. That we partake of, that we have a new life that Jesus will offer us. We pray at this Mass that God will increase our faith to understand, to comprehend the Holy Eucharist and the power of Mass. That we may be here every time we go for Mass. And that we may have faith enough never to stumble never to leave Christ, never to run away. The Lord be with you.
and his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with pastor joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the name of your glory as they are You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy their holiness gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, we should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Thanks to your fairness, worthy 
in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that protecting of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your child's pray throughout the world and bring us the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Philip our Bishop and all the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the fall of the resurrection and all who have died in the mercy, especially our friend Ferdinand Thomas. Welcome them to the land of the saints. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, to the blessed apostles, and to the Lord in the past house, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may remain to be for us in eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and come by divine teaching, we are to pray, our Father. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who hold to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Father, I pray for them that they may be one in us, so that the world may live. It was you who sent me, says the Lord, and we have. Let us pray. Keep us safe, O oh Lord. We pray that those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Mass is Thank you so much, Father. I'm grateful. I'm grateful.
ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ